Welcome to Carmel, and welcome back for those of you who are following our series. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of an introduction here to a new numbering system because, uh, frankly, it's driving SEP and I nuts to keep track of all the videos. So this will be number one, although we've already done several videos without numbers. So this will be number one. Uh, I want to uh, you to put on your Catholic imagination. This is about Welcome to Carmel, and uh, we're going to be looking at creation and seeing the grandeur of God, the grandeur of God in creation. And we're going to talk about Catholic spirituality, uh, prayer, and but we're going to start out universal. We're going to start out with the experience of the world coming in. And I'm going to need some help. And I want you to know that I'm not going to, I'm going to make a very strong effort in this uh, Welcome to Karma series to not give you my opinion unless I draw attention to that. I say, this is my opinion. This is my witness. This is what I've seen or heard. Instead, I'm going to give you what has been handed on to me, and it's a, uh, a revelation, what my teachers have received from others, and there will be sources. Uh, so one, I will give you what I've received. I'll pass it on. Two, uh, I will try to stay out of the swampland of contention to keep you on the high road where what we say, nobody really disputes this. For example, uh, the world is uh, round, it's not flat. Most people don't dispute that. So we're gonna keep you away from contention and fights, the swampland, keep you on the high ground because this is a very vulnerable time if you're just coming to find out and you're struggling, is God in your life? Should he be in your life? How do you draw closer to God? What is your niche? Where is it at? And uh, so I want you to understand that. One, not my opinion. Two, we're going to stay away from contention. We're going to stay in what we call uh, the area that's the high ground. Does that make sense, Sep? Okay. Yes. Now, uh, this is tape one. You're going to put that imagination on. I'm going to be giving you that point of view from what we call the traditional wisdom of uh, mankind, traditional wisdom of humanity, humankind, that goes back uh, basic that God exists and that uh, we exist and we're responding to him. But even for non-believers, anyone can come to these tapes and uh, begin to observe us, study us. It's okay. We're not going to be offended. So leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like what we're doing, like it. But again, this is the introductory. I cannot emphasize this enough that and I don't want I want what you get here to open your mind, and I want that mind to be formed. I just don't want to stuff you like sausage with ideas, okay? I want you to process of thinking, and there's a reason for that. Uh, other people can open your mind at a place on the map of knowledge, move you in that map, and then reclose your mind, put you there where they want you very manipulative. You could be open to manipulation. Uh, you're susceptible to that. And so uh, you have dignity. Uh, I want to uh, offer you. I don't want to steamroll. I want to offer you uh, a point of view. Uh, I want to hand on to you, witness to you what I have received. And you choose. You choose. Uh, but so there is a thing called spiritual geography. And that's the formation of your mind. And I, I can't take credit for that. This is, uh, we'll be using different tools. This is Garagou Lagrange. And actually, uh, the great saint in the Catholic tradition, John Paul II, did a doctoral dissertation. This is one of the men that I understand was the, a grader on that doctoral dissertation. And he says it best. There's a two-volume book. You need a closer in, or can you read that, Sep? You need to come in closer? Like that? Yeah, like that. Is that good? Yes. Okay, we got that. Is our uh, my manager there? I will give you some concepts on your map of knowledge. There is a geography, your point of origin, your point of destination, and the via, the way you're going to get there. Uh, I'm not seeking to accumulate knowledge for you and you to accumulate knowledge, but instead, with this information, to form your mind for acting. Form your mind for acting so that you can choose, you can decide and uh, for yourself. And be sure that uh, to be a son or daughter of God 
is one of the most worthiest ambitions of your soul. Isn't that right, Sup? Yeah. A child of God. Okay, so these are some things that motivate us. So we have one of our tools here, one of, I don't want to say that's like boss, but he's like an older brother, a big brother that's gone before us and has accumulated a lot of knowledge. So this is a professor uh, in Rome who has deceased. You can pray for him, Father Garagou Lagrange, a Dominican. Now, the concepts and the spiritual geography forming your mind, think like this, and I think it'll go well. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a longer tape, and uh, uh, and these concepts will be baby concepts, but think of it in terms of maps. We're going to have a map. You're going to have a compass, and there's going to be points on that map, north, south, east, and west. That's all. And you're all familiar with a map. You're all familiar with a compass, and you're all familiar with north, south, east, and west. And what I've observed is that people have removed points on that map have removed places on that map. And I simply want to put the stuff back. I just want, and you choose, and I'll tell you, this is what I've received and this is where we're at. So there is the concept of spiritual geography. And uh, we're going to use that. And on that map, with that compass and the compass points, you'll see horizons. You'll begin to travel through land. You'll see horizons. And you'll say, I, I, I never knew that before. And you'll see points. Uh, 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 that I want to point out to you as we travel together and tell you what I feel the significance of that is. And again, I'm looking at the world through an imagination, a, 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 not, not the type of imagination that the, uh, the modern world will use that term, but in the term of can you imagine when you begin to think with the mind of God? Philosophy can help us out there. Theology can help us out there. When you begin to think, for me, with the mind of the church, not with this mind of this priest or that nun or mom and dad, but with the mind of the church. You're free to reject it, but begin to think. And that's what I'm conveying to you, that spiritual geography. Related there, there are general means to perfection, meaning there is a start, there is a way, and there's a point of destination. And we are growing. And we, we, I've been told, it's, some call it uh, stages of conversion. Others call it a process of holiness, a process of perfection. But there are general means. I want that on your map. And you'll see that as we develop these tapes. There's general means, but there's also specific means. And we'll talk about it. And there's been a tape. Didn't we do one on general means, uh, Sup? We've done one on, on, on general means. And we're going to give you that specific means so that you understand uh, a little bit about there is a the uh, big picture and a very specific picture that you could be called to and you'll you'll pick that up and we'll repeat that over and over but every time we do it I'm going to try to convey to you the knowledge uh, and the ideas in terms of the formation in terms of for beginners who need no initiation no experience whatsoever those who are uh, uh, our, our mid-level who have some experience beyond beginning, some advanced, and for the very advanced, those who are uh, uh, have mastered some of this. So you have the beginner, no experience, mid-level, and then those who have mastered it and are wanting to improve uh, their knowledge and continue on. So there'll be three approaches when you'll see as we progress in these tapes. Uh, again, it's for uh, often. This is going to be for those who are called and are looking and are hungry. Uh, hungry, they don't quite know what it is. Are they hungry for justice, truth, goodness? Uh, Do-it-yourselfers? Maybe you have been crucified by Christians. Uh, uh, Do-it-yourselfer. I want to convey to you another little tool we have, a friend and a big sister, Therese, the little flower, St. Therese. She was guided by the Holy Spirit not by a spiritual director, a priest, or a bishop, or a nun, but by the Holy Spirit. And that is, uh, can, is that coming up okay, Seppi? Yeah. Can you see her smiling? Yeah. You want to wave to her? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's helpful if you have been, uh, I don't want to uh, misguided or misunderstood. Know that God is there, and God is greater than any person, any misunderstanding or any fog. And this is an example. And you can ask people, you can ask Carmelites, is it true that the little flower, St. Therese of Lisieux, 
Was she guided by the Holy Spirit? Was that her spiritual director? Ask that question in that way, and you're focusing it so that you get a yes, no, or I don't know answer, so that somebody doesn't go off and, 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 and talk for 10 minutes and not answer your question. Your life is to be ordered to God. That's what we believe. And, uh, and we believe that, that God wants to gather us into community. Uh, community is pretty basic. We are community people. You may say, oh, not me, not me. Uh, they're in the ordinary course of events. And I'll be talking in these tapes about the ordinary, not the extraordinary. I don't want to invert. Oftentimes, people today particularly people with lots of letters behind their name, will invert and use the exception rather than the rule. And you have to watch that. The exception rather than the rule. Okay. So if we were driving and there's an emergency, it's okay to drive on the grassy medium or the side of the road. You'll see that when police do that. That's the exception. The normal rule is to travel, to, to travel on the, the, the main portion of the highway. That's how you normally travel. You don't travel in the ditch. You don't trap. Why? Because there's dangers there. So I'm going to be approaching this from the uh, the thought processes of communion. You live in communion. Can't even be buried without somebody else helping you. So whether you agree or not, everybody produces uh, some good. Uh, hopefully, in the, in the ordinary course of events, in society, you have a purpose. Now, you can reject that purpose. You can count against it. But I'm starting to give you the concept of communal. C-O-M-M-U-N-I-O. -M -M -I -I Did I spell that right, Sep? Okay. So communal. We're a society. I've never met you, but we're in society. I can't get buried with the help without the help of my neighbor. And we go back into the... Uh, Hebrew text, the Old Testament, and it was a good act of virtue to bury the dead. Well, you can see that, I mean, that's observable event. That's natural law. You're not going to be able to bury yourself. Uh, we think in terms of communio and society that no one in the body of Christ is without mother, father, sister, or brother. So if you're listening to this, and we have a listening audience in Asia, uh, North America, we're in Michigan, no one is without mother, father, sister, brother. You're not alone. You're not alone. And we as communal gather in others. We gather. Uh, we cleanse. And we are dispersing goodness, dispersing truth to disperse darkness. And so we gather, we cleanse, and disperse darkness. Got that? That's going to be a theme going throughout these tapes. All in preparation for an afterlife. We believe it's called the kingdom to come. All in preparation. Okay? So again, uh, I'm welcoming you to what we call Welcome to Carmel. Carmel is like a diamond. Uh, we take You take light and uh, a diamond can reflect it and you can see different colors of the rainbow. You can see red if you have a sacred heart devotion. You see the red. You can see the blue if you have the Marian devotion. You can see green if you're thinking about the Holy Spirit. But Carmel is a Marian way of life. Carmel is Mary's order. It's a mother's order. It's an order dedicated to a lay woman. Think about it. A lay woman protected by a lay man. And, and, and we have Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph. I, these are my statues from... Uh, she should be a little bit bigger because in terms of holiness and perfection, we believe Mary exceeds all the perfections uh, that uh, others have, the most perfection that a human can take from God. And we'll talk more about that in, a, in another tape. But again, come to Carmel, welcome to Carmel, not to grab you and make you into a Carmelite, to form you, not to stuff you with a bunch of ideas like sausage, but to form your mind for action. And that action is to draw closer to God. And, um, and if, that, if I'm not doing that, let me know because I failed you. And I, I have a job description. And my job description is like any other in Carmel. You have job descriptions and you can know when they're performing, performing well, and when they're poor, poorly performing. So, uh, this entire uh, channel is, is discusses uh, the, dressing the bride in holiness. And we'll talk about what holiness means. We'll talk about what the bride is from our point of view. 
And I introduced you in prior tapes about obstacles uh, to this vocation. There is the dominion of God, and we are trying to further the dominion of God. There is the, uh, the empire of injustice and the dominion of, uh, uh, I got, might have that wrong, the dominion of the lie and the empire of injustice that are opposed to the dominion of God. And uh, that's for conflict uh, resolution. We'll talk about that in a further tape. And uh, we don't want injustice to expand. We don't want darkness to expand. We don't want the lie to expand. We're about truth, goodness, and light. One of the basic, basic foundational missions of Christian believers is uh, truth-telling. Would you agree, Sep? Truth-telling. Yeah. Truth-telling. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and what was it, Sep? I am the, the, way. the, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, so when you look at a Catholic priest, a nun, a friar, a lay person, nothing in their life, we're imperfect, Nothing in their life is to be inconsistent with that basic truth-telling. It often is because of sin. It often is because of uh, ignorance and an inclination to do wrong. But they are to stand for that value, even though they may fall short. I may fall short. Uh, and that noble project that we're starting on is I'm in front of the camera. It's been the process of many people that have gone before us. So I can't take the credit here. Okay. So many people, I'm talking to people behind the camera, hours upon hours of looking at English, which is not their primary language, uh, all for the love of God. Is that right? And the promotion of the family. And uh, so I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, I want to leave you with the concept and conclude that God is the goal. It's the Trinitarian God. Carmel is very Trinitarian. And when there is fog, uh, no matter where you're at in life, no matter what orders, uh, where the other orders go at or could be confused, Carmel is to be true to that compass, that horizon, that Trinitarian God. And that Trinitarian God, we have the Our Father, uh, who we ascribe to him as creating, Christ Jesus Christ as redeeming a fallen creation. And we have the Holy Spirit sanctifying, making that, that, that ordering that fallen, uh, redeemed creature better than what it is. Okay, so there's the Father Creator, the Son Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit Sanctifier. I want you to know that. From the Godhead, there are only two processions. I want this on your map of knowledge. There is a procession of truth, and there is a, pro a procession of goodness. God's supreme activity within the Godhead is knowing and loving, knowing and loving. And you see this coming out in his act of creation, in the angels, where we see the distinctions in the angels and the choirs. Angels have two activities, knowing and loving. They, got, they receive that from God. And we've received much, and we want to pass that on. The word that people like to use now is we are diffusing that. So I want to start with that Trinitarian, lay this foundation. I'm giving you a list, an inventory of concepts to pull back on as you progress through these tapes. The procession of truth from God you know is Jesus Christ. The pro procession of charity, of love, of goodness you know as the Holy Spirit. Okay? So there is this loving of God, which is the Holy Spirit. There's this knowing this truth, procession of truth from God as Jesus Christ. Now we'll fine tune that for you, the, uh, for some of the philosophers out there. We're not into, into dividing that, but at, at, at one of the future tapes we'll talk about God in terms of his existence, in terms of his essence, and his operations. Okay, So I'm mixing uh, go uh, goodness and charity, objects with actions. I know that, but for the simple People coming here, I want you to know, simple, I don't mean by um, uh, that, yeah, that, that I, I mean that you've never had any experience. I want you to think of the Godhead, and I want to think of processions coming out. A procession, just like a procession of water coming out of a hose. That one procession is Jesus Christ, truth. There's another procession that is goodness, that is loving knowing that's the Holy Spirit, okay? They all conclude in that Godhead. Now, um, 
I want to leave you with the thought of who we are as Carmels, Carmelites in the words of the great Saint John Paul II. And you can find this, uh, he has an apostolic letter, uh, and maybe we can put a link to this apostolic letter. Uh, Master in Faith, December the 24th, 1990, uh, apostolic letter of His Holiness John Paul II for the fourth centenary of the death of St. John of the Cross. And he identifies what a Carmelite is. And uh, he writes about John of the Cross, and I'm, I'm quoting him, the living image of a discalced Carmelite is John of the Cross. That's what he's saying here. And he talks about the living image of the discalced Carmelite, austerity, intimacy with God, intense prayer, evangelical fraternity, and a commitment to promoting prayer and Christian perfection through the spiritual teaching and direction which are your specific apostle in the church. Now this is the great Saint John Paul II talking to the world and talking about people who want something deeper. Something deeper and beyond unlimited uh, pleasure, unlimited goods, unlimited flavors and food. There is still that gnawing. And Carmel is not to grab you and turn you into a Carmelite. That's not what this is about at all. Carmel is to disperse darkness, disperse the fog, give you a map, okay? Give you a compass, okay? Point out horizons and say, have you thought about this? and form your mind so that as you progress, you'll begin to discern and be able to make acts for acting on how to go from where you're at to where you want to be. Where you're at, where you ought to be. Happiness, peace. Does that make sense, Seth? Okay, so I, I gave you that. And for we as uh, Carmelites, we want to advocate that the advance uh, and you artists will like this. We cannot just advance in humanity uh, with intellectual advancing. Lots of degrees. There is a contemplative advance. There is a prayer dimension. There is a dimension that's unseen and unknown. So, uh, so not just intellectual advancement. There is an advancement, an interior advancement, and that's what makes society, elevates the values in society, and makes life more bearable. The salt of the earth, okay? I want you to think about that. We must, we must undergo development in our contemplative dimension, and we must disperse the, image, the, the teachings of our Holy Father John of the Cross. That's what we're doing here. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing what I was told to do, okay? If I do it not in a good way, blame my parents, okay? So uh, I want to leave you, I've given you Gergou Lagrange, Teresa of Avila, all the mindset of the church. I've talked about John of the Cross. Uh, here is his complete, complete works, ICS publications. I've talked about the great Saint John Paul II. And I've used this Rubik's cube to show you there's different dimensions to Carmel, okay? And they will reflect you should be able to find whatever you're searching for in as a, a direction, a guide to where you want to go. It won't be count, meaning if you're called to be a Dominican, we can't tell you everything about Dominicans, but you should be able to get illuminated here to know a little bit more about where you have to be at. Okay? A key and a guide, spiritual guide. I leave you with one other one. I, I promised about the specific means. We talked in a, in a prior tape about the general means to perfection. I now want to leave you with the mindset of the church that's called, that's curated, the minds of many saints that have gone before us, laymen, Mary and Joseph. And this is not meant to exclude any other way because there's many ways to approach God as there are souls. But then the mindset of the church for today, there's four ways to approach God by putting your hand in the hand of Jesus Christ. And I, and I just leave you with, uh, and, and Seppi can, we'll, we'll type that in a little bit. We're gonna do a, a separate talk on this, but it's the specific means. And it comes from canon law, and that's the official legislation of the Holy Father. Uh, and it talks about drawing closer to God by putting your hand in the hand of Jesus Christ, walking more closely with him as the praying Jesus. But you're walking and you're moving towards God from where you're at. You're putting your hand in it. 
That's the Carmelites. You're putting your hand in the hand of Jesus Christ and walking more closely to God, uh, preaching. That's the Dominicans. That's the that's a way. There's another way. You put your hand in the hand of Jesus Christ, walk closer to God and closer to Jesus by doing good to others. That's the Franciscans. You put your hand in the hand of Jesus Christ and walk closer to God, closer to Jesus, dialoguing with the world, with the leaders of the world. That's the Jesuits, okay? Like it or not, reject it, accept it, that's the mindset of what you're being faced with as you try to come closer and understand the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, the people of God. And that's their mindset. Uh, and we'll go into it on a separate tape. But I'm getting it from, from this right here. And Canon, uh, Sep, maybe you can give them a, con a connection to that, is Canon 577, and I'll read it for you. Just briefly, uh, in the church there are very many institutes of consecrated life with gifts that differ according to the grace which has been given them. They more closely follow Christ praying or Christ proclaiming the kingdom of God or Christ doing good to people or Christ in dialogue with people of this world, but always Christ doing the will of the Father. There's a nice commentary on here that uh, these are distinctions um, uh, and uh, they will help you discern maybe where your niche is at. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a job description in the heart, the mind and heart of God. And when you find that, you find your niche, you find your happiness. So what it's about, happiness, okay?